All right, so we just picked up a 2023 T-Rex. I wanna go over some of the details about it. It might be for you, might not be for you. Some people think it's a little too expensive and some people think it's well worth the money. We'll just go over some of the stuff that maybe sometimes when you're online, you don't know about, and then you get it and you'll be like, oh shit, this is what right. I bought. First thing I wanna talk about is the keys. It comes with two sets of keys and with a flash drive. I thought it was different. I hadn't seen no other manufacturer do this. It comes with a flash drive and it has your owner's manual on it. It brings up the owner's manual for you. you kind of look at it online. That's probably the most tech you'll get out of the whole deal. Uh, cause the T-Rex is pretty much very basic. You got your owner's manual on there. It kind of talks about everything on it. I thought that was cool that they put it on a flash drive. Just wish they would have capitalized on the flash drive. If you were gonna use some type of tech, I wish they would have put pictures of it going into the assembly line, the finished product, maybe a catalog with accessories kind of linking me back to their website. So I would have kept shopping or something, but it's just your owner's manual on there. So also got the immobilizer on both sets of keys. You also have the keys to the GV bags. You have two sets of that. Now on this set of keys here, you got the same thing. You got the GV key, the one key, and then you have the immobilizer remote. Once you turn it to on, then you press the immobilizer. As long as you're showing that you're in neutral, it'll, it'll start right up. Now the factory sound on this is very quiet unless you get on it. Once you're on the highway and you're going, then you start to make some noise and it sounds really good. Otherwise, with the stock exhaust, it's kind of real quiet, especially just cruising around. I want to show you the interior on this thing just because, you know, if you've never rode in one or you've never had the opportunity to see one in person, you don't really know what it feels like in here. And I want to give you that opportunity. This is pretty much like a cover or some sort. Very little cushioning. It's not comfortable. It's a bucket type seat just kind of cover going on there and that's pretty much your seat so it's not luxury you're not riding really uh in a luxury vehicle so for me i'm 5'8 230 pounds a little pressure points in the back and i didn't know why it was why my back was bothering me and it just happened to be that i took it out another day and i kind of felt the same pressure points there so i pretty much knew that it was coming from riding in a t-rex so that's that on the back of the t-rex seat here you have these little clips that you can pull out and then this you can shift it forward or back now, the foot pedals have the same type of setup down here you can pull that pin out and move the pedals backwards or forwards depending on your height i think these things are rated to about a 6.3 type height so make sure you keep that in mind if you're going to buy one of these and you have a clutch brake and gas type setup the pedals are very similar to the dodge viper lotus prowler had that setup because it's kind of like a cone and the pedals on that thing were a little squished too it's not uncomfortable but it's not the most comfortable pedals on this thing pretty much the same setup for the passenger you have a pin here that you move and you can move this forward and backwards they also have a footrest down there it has a pin you can move that forward or backwards depending on your passenger's height here you have your emergency brake which you just kind of pull down on it and pull it back and it activates very basic emergency brake nothing fancy there and then you have your sequential gearing here one up five down six gears you have a neutral on there uh, fairly easy to use if you play video games as a kid you'll figure that out fairly quickly that's nothing there i think the hardest part of the shifting and all that is getting from reverse to first and get it forward going it's so weird it's weird it's kind of like a magic trick or something you gotta do to it and then on this side here you have your reverse lever which you pull that up and then you gotta disengage the clutch down there it does this thing you'll get this thing up here light up as an r and you'll know to go advice was given to me that if it's grinding it's not doing the right thing so don't push it you know because you could actually break something in the reverse gearing and forward gearing and stuff like that so. this thing it pretty much just clicks on and you kind of just shift it and it clicks in and then to get it off you got a little button up here you push that down grab on this and then the steering wheel pops out for you you have to do that so you could get in and out if there's no door this doesn't go down pretty much sliding in like a race car there's a couple of videos out there of people doing it online and how to get in and out i personally just put my feet on here slide my feet down and i jump my fat ass in there and i keep it pushing i don't care i bought it to use it so i'm gonna put some wear and tear on it for sure some of the buttons that this thing has uh they don't really do nothing crazy uh you know the regular kawasaki dash looks like a motorcycle dash i love the kawasaki engine man i can't wait to put an exhaust on this thing 
Then you have some warning things here, like your seatbelt, reverse, park. I thought this was like an airlift type thing, like Lamborghini has to bring the car up and down. But no, this is just a toggle. Once you press this, it'll activate the menu and full throttle or low throttle. And then you can do some traction control settings, that, you know, by moving this up and down and pressing this. That's all that does, nothing fancy. There's no radio on this thing, it's very basic. Now, it has a backup camera. Um, integrated into the rear view mirror here so once you put it on reverse the camera lights up here because you pretty much can't see anything when you're look, trying to look back i'm sure that they have this rear view mirror up because of some type of regulations or something they need to follow but this thing is the most uncomfortable thing to have kind of bangs on your head this i noticed that a lot of people take off and they relocate it somewhere else i'm gonna do the same thing i'm gonna unclip it figure out where else to put it or just delete it completely because so you can't see nothing through the rear view mirror so on the outside you got some carbon fiber here you got some carbon on the sides here might add a little bit more carbon to it white wheels are freaking crazy i'm gonna be a slave to those wheels i did it with the can and riker and every time i went out for a five minute ride i had to clean those wheels so this is gonna be the same thing it's gonna be a nightmare trying to keep this thing clean it's white on white even the a-arms and frame everything's white on this thing nightmare to clean but you know what it'll keep me entertained gv bags are cool because you can kind of carry stuff with you if you needed to stuff in there if you wanted to dnm motorsports there you go check them out if you're looking for a t-rex this thing comes with a battery tender so it's already installed in it all you have to do is grab the cable from under there plug this thing in Especially if you're in a cold weather state, you're probably gonna wanna keep your battery on a tender. They're new, they come with a battery tender and they also come with a cover. It should be in your saddlebags. It's definitely unique looking, so I get why they price them so high. They're limited in production, so they're not mass produced.